I now want to revisit the rules so that we make side effects a bit more explicit. So what you'll see is that there's this little triangle here. Okay, and the triangle is just to mean that the order matters and that you should evaluate um, the left hand side before you evaluate the right hand side. So here what I mean is that you have to evaluate E to get an, a V, and then after that you should uh, perform the mutation, the put, right, the environment put here. Um, similarly in the sequence you should evaluate uh, the first term first, uh, and then the second term second. So the order does matter. If you evaluate the second term first, you could have unexpected errors. Um, and then application, again, this all matters. So you have to do first evaluate the function, then the argument, and then you create the new environment, uh, followed by running, evaluating the body of the lambda. Okay. Uh, if you switch, if you flip any of these orders, or you reordered it in any way, you will not get 100% on this homework assignment. Okay, because there are some edge cases that trigger or that are affected by uh, very sensitive to the order in which you evaluate things. Um, okay, so we can go a step further and make everything super explicit. And this will become clear, right? Because you know, so far I've been telling you that mutation is bad and you don't want to have mutation in your code, so why would you want to have mutation in the rules? Right? That seems kind of counterintuitive. And you're right, uh, we should have mutation explicit. So, I am now changing the rules, annotating the rules so that it becomes very clear what's going on, right? So what we have, actually let me see if I have the, the whole thing correct. Oh, actually I don't. But I can change this. So I'll update this rule so that it's also explicit there. Okay. So the idea is that you sh you can, and perhaps even should. So the reason I didn't do it is just so it, it makes it a bit cleaner. But for the sake of understanding, you can actually think of the heap as representing, as you will see, basically we're going to have a global heap H, and we're going to cover that in a future video. So don't don't be too concerned about this. So what you have is you're going to have a, a global heap that will store all the bindings, the environments, right? Um, e is going to be a handle to a, so an environment is going to be represented by a handle to a place in the heap. Okay. So again, it will be a reference to an environment that is stored in the heap. So what we're saying here, if you understand this rule and by making the heaps explicit, what I'm trying to say here is that you have an initial heap H, okay, um, that if I'm given this initial heap H, I will evaluate, and if I have as my term a define, and I have um, an environment E, the evaluation of this is going to return a void and an H2. So how do we get this H2, this new heap? Well, we take the original heap and we evaluate the expression, and that should return an H1. Actually, H1. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it should create an H1. Uh, you may wonder why does it create a new, a new heap? Well, because when you do a function call, you are actually mutating the heap, right? As we just learned. So whenever you do a function call, you are mutating the heap. You're creating a new environment there. So you want this environment to be available. Um, to be available for the next operation, right? So uh, we take an original heap and we mutate, right? So there's some mutation happening. So therefore, the result is now a pair, I guess, right? So it's going to be the value that you return plus some heap that represents, contains all the side effects, all the environments, I guess. Not I guess, I'm sure. <laughs> so you have an input heap uh, and the output is going to be, so input is heap, expression and environment. Output is going to be value and new heap. Okay, and then you take this heap and you pass it to the second operation. So this operation, you have a heap and you perform the put, as you will it'll become more clear once we look at the code. Uh, and the output is going to be a new heap. And that heap is what you return. Okay, so there were two steps here. Okay. So if you squint your eyes, the order represents how the, the heaps are uh, propagated. So you, if you have an internal heap, uh, an input heap here, 
it will be used as an input for this operation. And then the triangle means that the output of this heap should go to this operation. And then the output that outputs a value, but also a heap, which should be used as an input to this operation, which should also produce as an output the heap, right? You have this um, handle, but also a new heap, which is then propagated here. And finally, the resulting heap is propagated to the result of here. Okay, so this is what the arrows mean. The reason I didn't make this um, heaps explicit is just because you have the arrows here. So you should infer it from it, from, from this slide. Oops, from this slide. Okay. Uh, and now this is our rule sheet, and that's what I would like you to do in the following video. Please uh, place this he this uh, slide in a separate window and try to do the exercises, the three exercises that I'm going to do. Essentially, what I'm going to, um, we're, what we're, the exercise we're going to choose to run are our running and motivating example, where you have those three instructions where um, lambda f wasn't able to evaluate. Right, because the function was reordered with the variable, uh, the the variable declaration. Uh, okay, so see you in a bit.